Um, hi, everyone. Um, uh, welcome on the first workshop today, which is us uh, participate and innovate unleashing collective creativity and orga organizations. My name is Natalia. Uh, I'm from Centrum Cyfrowe, based here in Poland in Warsaw. Uh, with me, there are my colleagues, uh, Una from the Hand Museum and Nadia from Platonic Labs uh, from uh, Barcelona, uh, Spain. And uh, today, together, we are going to uh, walk you through the participatory practices and business models uh, based on the uh, on our project called the recharge so today we're going to talk a little bit about the project uh, how we developed the uh, framework frameworks that we also want to practice a little bit in the second part of uh, today's meeting and this workshop and uh, so yeah, we're going to talk about uh, the project, uh, the, uh, Hunt, the Hunt Museum case study, and then we'll have uh, an exercise uh, uh, with, uh, with you all. Uh, uh, but in the meantime, before we start with all of this, we would like to kind of walk you through the case of participation as such, like the how do we all understand participation and I would like to invite you today uh, to an exercise that we can all uh, do online uh, on Mentimeter. So if you all could please get your phones and go to the website called uh, menti.com and uh, and uh, use this uh, code that you can see above you should all be able to to get to uh, to our first online exercise. Are you there? Okay, let's wait a little. You're on? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Everyone is, uh, is there? Okay. Great. So you should be able to see the first question, which is, uh, what is your understanding of participation? Maybe let's give ourselves like two more minutes with this, because we have another people joining. Hi, everyone. Uh, so uh, yeah, all of those uh, who just came in, if you can go to, uh, if you can use your phone and uh, go to the website called menti.com. And they can see still the, you can still see the code of uh, this uh, little online exercise uh, uh, above over there. It's uh, 26, 25, uh, 119. Yeah, the first answers are coming. Great. Thank you. You can, I think you can add more than one answer. So please use your imagination and uh, feel free to, to give more than one answer on how you uh, understand participation. Also, it is valid for us to kind of, yeah, I'm sorry. Yeah, so the number, the number, the code, the number is uh, uh, over there, 2625-119. All right, so yeah, great. Thank you for the first answers uh, uh, popping out. Uh, I really like the first one, uh, when people's contribution can be implemented. I see what you've done here, like uh, it's great to, to kind of think of the shift from, from uh, being active to kind of implement uh, ideas uh, uh, brought up by, uh, by the people, uh, which is uh, really cool. Uh, active involvement, contribution, feeling listened to, yeah, having uh, having a say, get involved. Act in general, active and involved. It's more or less uh, something that uh, that appears uh, uh, here uh, most of the time. To be a part of a project, yes. Is anyone uh, answering still? Yeah, I see a few people still writing, so let's wait a little. 
Wikipedia, it's a great example of participation. It's also the reason why we are all here. So it's, uh, it's nice to, to have this uh, answer as well. Being active part of something, contribution, yes. Okay, still see people typing, so take your time. I think that people joining us uh, on online uh, via stream can also take active part in this uh, participatory, uh, more or less, activity. Sharing unique knowledge, experience, that's also very nice. Okay, anyone else? This, this uh, activism, like this, uh, this element of being active, being listened to and have something to say, uh, this is something that we want to extend today and we, can't, we want to show you a different level of the participation and how can it be used by cultural institutions in order to uh, find the new ways uh, of not only creating and co-creating projects but also financing like sustainable financing and we will get to this part in a in a moment so thank you for your answers uh, that uh, brings us you know closer to the topic uh, of participation and uh, the second question is ah you're already there great so uh, like uh, in the second part we would like to answer to, to ask you about your uh, uh, your own views on uh, the participation from both your personal and organizational point of uh, story or point of view. So, uh, so it's great that there's so many yes, that pa participation is important in the projects, in your institutions. I really wonder about the not sure um, uh, not short uh, part and the uh, and stories behind it. Yeah, so I don't know if you want to share the people who are not sure if participation is uh, is implemented or important in their organization. I don't know if you want to share your thoughts or uh, uh, or this uncertainty uh, because this is something that we also like expected a little bit. Like uh, lots of uh, institutions that we work with or we approach, they sometimes. Uh, are active and they uh, they look towards their participants or like the audience, but and and they do have some projects or actions that uh, that uh, are there to kind of get the audience involved. But at the same time, they are not exactly sure whether this is a participatory project or or practice or not. So I don't know if you want to share anything uh, like uh, elaborate on this these uncertainties on on your side. If not, if not, it's 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 okay. We can then move uh, move to a different then to, to our last question, which is who are your particip who, who have your participants been so far? So it's mostly museum colleagues, volunteers, students, Wikipedia. Yeah. Uh, okay. So it's like uh, uh, ah, we are getting more. Great. The volunteer activity. Yes. Community groups. This is uh, this is something that we also like. Uh, we'll dive in a little bit more uh, in uh, during this workshop. Uh, museums, yes. Teachers, educators, great staff, librarians, very good groups and uh, participants. Art, okay. Researchers, professors, okay. So we have. Uh, a big part of this educational kind of um, uh, level of uh, of participants, which is um, uh, which is kind of uh, natural, I would say, in uh, lots of projects. Do you want to comment on something? Do you want to comment on that? Okay. 
Great. So I think we, we I, I really like this community uh, aspect. And uh, as I mentioned, this is some, also something that we kind of uh, dived uh, in uh, in today's workshop. So I think that uh, uh, we have a warm up and uh, we've uh, we've walked into this topic of the participation. Also, it was nice to hear from you, like, what is your approach? What is your understanding and what's your experience? in uh, um, leading or like being part of participatory activities. Uh, uh, so I think we can go back to the original presentation. And, uh, and yeah, let me walk you through the project uh, that we will um, present to you today as a context for our uh, workshop act activities. Yeah, but can we go back to the presentation? Ah, yes, you're right. Great, thank you. So uh, our project, it's called Recharge, and it stands for Resilient European Cultural Heritage as a Resource for Growth and Engagement. And uh, this project is created by the consortium of 10, uh, ten institutions from, uh, from Europe, amongst which you, you will find the, um, the Hunt Museum, uh, the Platonic Labs, Centrum Cyfrowe, but we have also um, university partners. There's a university from Rotterdam, a university from Valladolid, a muse maritime museum uh, in Estonia. So uh, the 10 of us, like the 10 institution that, uh, institutions that, uh, that create this uh, uh, project, um, started with the question, how can we use participation as a driving force for cultural heritage business models uh, that can be implemented in order to kind of obtain and create a sustainable financing for, for cultural heritage institutions in Europe? And we believe that participation, so like this, uh, this turn towards your, uh, your audience and kind of learning in them into, it's, uh, it's the missing element that can be used in, this, uh, um, in finding the sustainable or like trying to practice sustainable financing for, uh, for cultural institutions. And uh, in this project, we have two kind of methodologies. We have the method, and they are both kind of uh, linked to the participatory approach. So the first framework, framework, framework is the participatory business model, uh, business models that we created through different kind of research, but also through uh, practices that we take over in this, uh, in this project. And this was a combination of the regular business model and the, our participatory approach. So we got this recharge models that I will uh, explain a little bit more in a minute. But also we have the methodology of a living lab. So so the this uh, space and this uh, um uh, this organization that kind of practices the uh, business model uh, business models um that we created within the project so the pract uh, participatory business models it's like uh, it's a kind of a combination between the uh, business models in general uh, like the business model canvas that was uh, work with by us. We worked with the business model canvas and we, we were uh, kind of trying to get this uh, participatory kind of lens to it. So through this, we kind of recreated the participatory, uh, we recreated the business models in order to find like uh, this, this way of working on participatory business models, participatory approaches and participatory uh, projects that, that institution can uh, implement throughout uh, their uh, uh, work with different kind of stakeholders and this is in order to find a, a value that is that goes along with participation and that goes along with involving different stakeholders for you as an institution so the, this will be also uh, explained a little bit more on the case study of the hunt museum and uh, 
And what is important that in this framework of, of participatory business modeling, uh, the important part is iteration. Because the, the framework itself, it has four phases that are all also like uh, participatory in a way. So basically there is a preparing this, uh, this whole framework, this whole kind of process business of business modeling. Uh, the phase where you invite uh, different stakeholders, you kind of recognize your stakeholders holders, you recognize the groups you want to work with, both on the business side and both on the, uh, let's say, community side. Then you go through co-designing with them, uh, co-designing the, the answer for the problem that you kind of want to explain or like improve together as, as a group uh, that gets involved uh, and use this, uh, this participatory approach. You go through implementing it, and then you go through reflecting whether uh, something was successful or not, some, what uh, needs improvements and what needs, uh, what needs um, like uh, a better um, implementation in the future. What's important that those, those phases, they, they also go through iterations themselves, like the co-designing phase can be repeated until you get the, the right kind of project, you get the right idea that you want to um, implement uh, uh, via this, uh, this participatory activity that you, you plan with your uh, groups, like community groups, or like uh, with the business, uh, the business groups uh, that you get involved. So, uh, Throughout this project, we identified we had identified uh, various business models that can be used to work with the, your stakeholders, with both the communities, or uh, your uh, audience, or your uh, business partners, in order not to use the bus business side as the as a sponsor of the project, but also an active side that can have a say when it comes to designing and like finding the run I uh, answers for all the questions about what we want to change, uh, who is the project for, uh, how can we like work together in order to get the outcome that we kind of go for. And uh, this approach was tested by the Living Labs, and uh, this is the second methodology that we use in the project. And the Living Labs are, the, are uh, those dynamic spaces that are created by the three museums taking part in this, uh, in this project, and they kind of test various different uh, models, uh, various uh, business models that we identified that you could see at the previous slide, and they work with their uh, stakeholder groups, both on the, let's say, community and uh, on the business side. So all, all our three museums were the phase one of the project, the uh, three original partners, which is uh, Prato Museum uh, uh, in Italy, the Hunt Museum in Ireland, and the Maritime Museum in uh, Estonia, they all picked different, uh, well, they had identified the need of the of their uh, stakeholders, of their group, of, your, of their audiences, let's say, and they they found and uh, picked the right uh, kind of uh, business model to go along with and to test it throughout the project. Right now, we also have the second generation of the Living Labs. There are six additional uh, uh, cultural institutions that are taking part and they are, they are kind of experimenting with implementing the, the Living Lab methodology using this uh, participatory business model canvas in order to kind of go through the whole process as we uh, as I described it and uh, you'll you will learn more on the example of the uh, Hunt Museum that Una will present to you thank you I'm a little bit taller <laughs> uh, so I don't know about you but I learn a lot better when theory is shown to me in practice. So let me show you how the Hunt Museum uh, developed uh, their living lab as a result of all this theory from the um, recharge process. And what I'm gonna focus on is the participatory nature of uh, the process that we went through in the Hunt Museum um, to really understand what it was we were trying to learn and test. Um, so, we tested uh, the CSR Cultural Heritage Community Model, which was a corporate social responsibility 
uh, business model. Um, and Natalia has touched on the concept of sponsorship and asking companies for sponsorship. And this is something that cultural heritage institutions are really good at doing and big fans of. But what we wanted to do was to understand what it meant to engage this corporate in a partnership. So we're all developing the project together because another concept that institutions or cultural institutions are very good at doing is having a great idea and implementing the idea and then inviting people to join the idea. But what we wanted to test was the development of the idea itself with our participants so that everybody has an equal voice in the process. The challenge that we wanted to solve at the Hunt Museum, uh, what we had identified was that we had, mm, I use this word lightly, you can tell me if you think we solved our problem, uh, a challenge with antisocial behaviour in the garden. So the Hunt Museum is uh, an old customs house building in Limerick in Ireland, which is on the river. And the garden is open. It doesn't close in the evening. It is a public thoroughfare. And in the evening time, uh, people would come, usually young people from a neighbouring community, and engage in antisocial behaviour. So we would see evidence of that in the morning, and this would be a challenge for us. Also in 2023, which is when we um, first initiated uh, our first steps of this process, we had a focus on climate. So these were our only two kind of prerequisites going into this project is we wanted to maybe solve this problem and maybe have a focus on climate. So what we did was try to understand our business model canvas. I won't go into too much detail with this, but if you see the levels of participation in this section here, where we're identifying the people that we need to inform, uh, collaborate with, but also ultimately empower. So these levels of participation are really important for us to understand how we wanted to enter into this. So from a real grassroots bottom-up approach rather than a top-down approach. So we enter into a process of co-ideation and co-creation. Our first co-ideation workshop, so if we think about three points of a triangle, we had museum, corporate, and community that we wanted to engage in this process. Our first co-ideation workshop was uh, local corporates who had uh, corporate social responsibility budgets that they wanted to spend in a more meaningful way. So these budgets could be money, but could be time, could be skills, any sort of um, resources that they could uh, give that would add value to the process. Um, and we engaged a number of Irish museums as well to come and join the conversation so that we'd have a museum perspective wider than just the Hunt Museum in this process. I think we had seven corporates and eight museums, as well as, um, you know, the Hunt Museum staff and our one gardener we had at the time. Uh, to engage in this in this conversation and what we did we you know the brief that they had was antisocial behavior in the garden benefit to the community and perhaps you know a link to climate and a link to the hunt museum collections this co-ideation workshop resulted in i think seven different ideas that would have been fantastic had we had lots and lots of time <laughs> But uh, as, we, as you know, this is a European project. We only had a certain amount of time to deliver uh, one particular thing. So the project that came out of this was something that we called Weaving Willow. So inspired by, I don't know if you can see, there's um, a cabinet in the background here. So there was like beautiful willow patterns. There was willow along the river. I think everybody was inspired by planting willow and uh, developing a project around that. The corporate from that co-ideation workshop that joined this partnership uh, was Cook Medical, not because of what they do as a company, which is make stents uh, like medical devices, but because they also have this um, love for giving back to the environment and biodiversity. Um, I have a list of what it was that they added, the value that they added to the process, which I think is really important. So one was they attended our co-ideation workshop at a co-creation workshop with community, they gave a presentation on why they wanted to join this, this project. And it wasn't, what I think is very interesting, it wasn't for like the media story because they're actually very quiet on 
any sort of, um, you know, they don't, what's the word I'm looking for? Shout out their good stories and that kind of thing on social media or in the local news. But they paid for 1,100 willow withies to be planted, both in the Hunt Museum garden and in their own site. They built a stent willow living sculpture, as you can see on the, on the right hand side. So that's going to grow and grow and grow and be this gorgeous living sculpture in their grounds. Um, they sponsored or um, uh, paid for, coordinated the soft launch of the Weaving Willow project, so on social media and local media. Um, they planted also a lovely willing, um, living willow fence in their grounds as well. Um, they hosted three, uh, I suppose, employee well-being weaving workshops for their own employees, um, as well as part of this uh, project. They also really kindly um, collected employee feedback on the project for the Recharge project, and also wrote a blog post for the Recharge project about their experience. So they were really, really like engaged in the partnership and the participatory nature of the whole project. Once we had the um, Living Willow sculptures planted in the Hunt Museum garden, we engaged our community. Um, and this was local community partners, not only in the neighborhood that um, the Hunt Museum like resides in, which is probably where most of the people engaging in the antisocial behavior in the garden come from, but also we wanted to engage a number of other community groups to see how we could add value and learn about the participatory process um, in this as, as like a whole sort of throughout the city. So not only did we have our local neighborhood community, but we had some schools, especially a school for young people with special needs. So as you can see, this was a conversation with a number of Willow artists. We had like a World Cafe style workshop to come up with a list of what the community wanted to do with Willow. What do they want to learn? How do they want to execute the rest of this project of benefit to them? Uh, so we used a very scientific method of smiley face stickers on the list of what they wanted to make, learn, achieve. Um, and so this is what ended up being the output of the of these partnerships. So we have four living willow sculptures in the Hunt Museum garden, two community made sculptures, both of which are shown here. The big circle was a willow sculpture, not a living willow sculpture, but a, a willow sculpture made by a group of young people from this school with special needs. And this hung in the Hunt Museum garden for a month. It kind of, you can see it hanging from a tree uh, for a month last summer. And then this willow pig, I wish I could show you scale. Uh, this pig is probably as big as two of these chairs together. It's quite a big pig. This was a community made object where we had a day long workshop uh, where anybody and everybody could come and contribute to making this pig. Um, in Limerick City, where I'm from and where the Hunt Museum is situated, pigs are an important animal. <laughs> so one of Limerick City's nicknames is Pig Town. So everybody understood the, I suppose, importance of creating this, and it was inspired by um, a Hunt Museum object, a little miniature. Um, as you can see, it's made of lots and lots of circles. So anybody who came to the workshop made a circle, and then we had a professional willow artist put it all together in this shape. This pig has traveled around Limerick City, and not by, it was not the Hunt Museum, our community members who contributed to making this have taken it on the St. Patrick's Day Parade which I don't know if you know in Ireland, this is huge. Um, it has spent some time in the city council offices. It has spent time in our neighborhood community center. And it was never me or a Hunt Museum staff member who initiated any of that. The community knocked on our door and said, we need, we need the pig, we need our pig. So this was really a really interesting output. Um, also, we had a number of willow weaving workshops, uh, bird feeders, willow lanterns, what else did we make to as part of learning how to work with this, um, you know, this cultural and historical and traditional techniques. And you can see um, so some of these workshops, 
not only were interesting for um, obviously we wanted community together and you can see there is children's pa children parents da -da -da. but um this is a picture of a daughter teaching her mom um, they had just arrived and had the same amount of tutelage that day but this kind of pro like idea of cross uh, I don't know generational teaching this gentleman here had never woven willow before in his life, ended up being an expert in 10 minutes, and all of the children in the workshop came to him to help them, even though there was a willow master in the room teaching this workshop. So this kind of an idea of the community really getting together and being involved, even outside of the participatory aspects of the research program, right? Um, did we solve our problem um, of reduction of antisocial behavior in the garden? Yes. We definitely reduced it. It's not gone. I don't know if it ever will be gone because, as I said, it's an open thoroughfare. It's open to the public 24-7. Uh, but this greenhouse before this project was unused, was every morning there was a pane of glass that needed to be replaced because it's broken. And all through... So if you come down here, you walk through the back of the Hunt Museum and all down here was where we had to call somebody from the local council to come and pick up evidence of um, antisocial behaviour and drug misuse. Uh, now this greenhouse has a big sign on the back of it called Kings Island Community Greenhouse, which is the community that we were engaging. They've taken over the greenhouse. They host plant swaps in this greenhouse regularly. The people who volunteer in the garden now come from this community. So there's a sense of pride that has developed that has definitely reduced the level of antisocial behaviour. There's also, um, let me see, I had a picture. Sorry, let me go back um, to one of our first. So <laughs> this picture here is the Willow artist actually demonstrating to community members how to reweave and tend to our Willow sculptures. And so it's community members who do that on a regular basis. And if I go back to my uh, picture in the garden very quickly, this is our uh, willow garden here. So you can see it's all part of this same small part of the garden that the community have taken over. Now, I do have some lessons learned. I don't have time to go into them now. If you want to ask me questions about them, I will answer them later, coffee break or during the workshop if you like, um, because we're about to head into our second iteration of testing this model. Um, so if you want to hear a little bit more about those, I would gladly share. Don't have time here. <laughs> Thank you. Um, yeah, so within the, pro within the Recharge project, we have what is called the Recharge Playbook. And the playbook takes the experiences from each of the living labs in Prato, in the Hunt Museum, and the Maritime Museum in Estonia to create a, um, an introduction to the participatory business models and also the workflow and tools that can be used to implement it. Um, the Recharge Playbook is a comprehensive methodo methodological tool and it includes exercises, detailed guidelines. It's essentially a resource for um, similar or adjacent institutions or organizations to go through it, ideate, and rethink their business model in ways where they could where they co-create value through participation. Um, so some examples of what you can do with our playbook is find the cultural participatory business model that fits you. We have nine different business models, if I'm not incorrect. Um, we can, you can figure out the method to your madness in implementing something like a living lab or a living lab, facilitate co-design sessions. The idea behind the playbook is to make this knowledge open and reusable and enable other institutions to imagine, um, create, and implement similar projects if they're trying to rethink how to both engage with their community and create a sustainable business model. So that leads us to um, uh, that leads us to what we're going to do today. So we've taken the playbook and broken it down into a few pieces. So what we're going to do is divide ourselves into um, four groups with about five to six people per group and we want to create a, and what we will do is create a problem statement and try to ideate solutions with tools from the playbook or maybe you can even imagine beyond the playbook. So that is what we are going to do today. There are some uh, tables behind you. I think we're all um, 
So I think if you want to group, so the first four tables here, if like uh, one, two, three, four, if um, each of us can create groups of five to six at the tables behind us, that would be really great and we can get started. Hopefully this will also offer us a moment to not just listen to the presentation, but engage with other participants in the conference as well. Okay, so you're going to get um, a set of post-its and then a set of cards. And so with the set of post-its, I think um, with the set of post-its, what you wanna do is create a problem statement. So for each group, to the first step will be to create a, sorry, to create a problem statement like, um, Maybe you all don't work for the same organization, but maybe you have common issues that such a, or an idea you would like to develop. Your, um, and so the problem statement should include an issue or challenge that you think you might wanna co-create or ideate on together. For example, um, you might have an idea for a new service or your organization strategy has identified a specific area to support local artists better or to support um, a business model that needs revision or you're looking for ways to strengthen involving um, other stakeholders. So the first step would be to write the problem statement, which is a challenge, issue, or pain point that you're currently facing and maybe um, why this problem matters to you or your group. And the second thing will be to ideate solutions. So you will see like three different cards. What if I could with so that. So what if I could is what if I could, what is, what is the what if or um, what is the action you could take to solve the challenge you've identified with a specific tool and then so that to create a specific impact. And you'll see that some of the cards are pre-written with um, prompts using our playbook or there are blank cards or which you can fill in your own. So when ideating solutions, I would suggest using at least one card that uses um, content from the playbook and feel free to use a blank one. So the first step is creating a problem statement or a challenge you wanna identify and then using the cards to sort of ideate or think about different types of solutions. Um, if you have any questions, please raise your hand or we'll be around um, to chat with you about how that should work.
Hey guys, that is the end of our session. Feel free to stay or go. Um, thank you so much for attending. <laughs>